Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. It is so great to have you. Adriana, Zach, good morning to you on the West Coast. Good morning. Hi. We have so many people joining the webinar right now, which is fantastic. I see some familiar faces. Zach, you may see some familiar ones as well here. Uh, but James and Johnny, good morning, good afternoon. Judith, Lara, thanks so much for joining. It would be great to actually hear about where are everyone's coming dialing in from today. So jump into the chat and uh, let us know where you've dialed in from today. And uh, feel free to, to use that chat functionality throughout the entirety of today's webinar. We'd love to hear from you. Maybe it's dialogue about what we're presenting. Maybe it's questions that you have for Adriana about Contentful, or maybe you have questions for Zach about how he's using Smartling and Contentful. Maybe you have questions for me. I'm Adrian with Smartling, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, we've also got a great product manager from Smartling named Steven. He's in the chat. He'll be, he'll be there to answer any questions you have about Contentful and Smartling. Um, you can also use the Q&A function on the bottom of your screen. You guys are all familiar with Zoom at this point. You are more than welcome to use that as a tool to ask your questions, but we'll also be taking a look out in the chat as well. But before we, we launch into the webinar, it's great to see people are dialing in from really all over the world, which is super appropriate for this particular webinar. Um, Adriana, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your role at Contentful? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Adriana, and I'm a customer success manager at Contentful. I've had the pleasure of working with a few different teams at Lyft that are using Contentful, and uh, maybe from start to finish or from uh, maybe working on a rebuild of their initial build. So I'm really excited to uh, share more about Contentful and, uh, and also um, watch Zach present some really, really cool data points um, on the implementation of Smartling and Contentful working together. That's fantastic. Well, it's great to have you here, uh, Adriana. Thanks. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And Zach, looks like you're in California in San Francisco. Tell us a bit about yourself and how did you, how did you end up at Lyft? Sure. Uh, so um, as you see on the slide here, my name is Zach Haken. I'm the translation and localization program manager at Lyft. Um, I've been at the company about six and a half years. Um, even before I was an employee there, I actually started as a Lyft driver. Um, had, a, had a passenger one night who happened to be a support team manager. We had a good conversation and uh, he invited me to a recruiting event and that's how I got the job at Lyft. Um, I've held positions at, uh, on customer support, on operations, competitive intelligence, and then for the last couple of years, I've, um, I've been on, on localization, first starting as a project manager uh, and then moving into to program management. That's awesome. Well, Zach, we're super excited to, to learn from your experience today. And maybe we should start off with what the, the challenge was when, uh, when, we, when, when you started to, to get deep, knee deep into localization. Sure. So uh, around 2018, um, Lyft decided that we needed to move into um, more than just English. Um, and so when we when we originally launched, it was it was just Spanish, um, but we quickly wanted to expand into into other languages as well. So there was a massive increase in terms of the amount of content that we needed to translate, and um, it was a real challenge. And we needed to make sure that uh, that we were set up for success. And so, um, as we saw this massive increase, we needed to make sure that across uh, platforms that we were able to to use some kind of connector or a, a content management system. Um, we, we need to make sure that we integrated well with it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is like a massive uh, launch into new languages that requires a huge amount of manpower, you would think, right? Because if you're going to increase the quantity of anything by 3,722 times, well, <laughs> gosh, it's gonna take a lot more people. But what, what, were, what was it for you like? How, how did you actually achieve this? What were the results of, of the work that you did with Contentful and Smartling? 
Well, being able to to connect the two systems together, um, we were a very lean team. It was only me as a project manager and uh, our, our program manager. Definitely want to give a shout out. Uh, I, I think he's on here. Uh, Brian McConnell, who was our um, fearless program manager, was was really the, the mastermind behind the original setup of all of this. So um, what he was able to do is uh, see the, um, the, the different uh, programs uh, that we could integrate with. So Contentful was was high on that list. And uh, um, because our, our web team was already using Contentful, we we were able to to leverage that uh, that connector right off the bat. And so uh, particularly for our, our blog content, which we ended up localizing a little bit later, um, it really eliminated a lot of the, the manual work that we needed to do. Uh, and, and because of the automation that, that Contentful and SmartLink Connector offered, we were able to really deploy content a lot faster as well. That's so cool. So tell us a little bit about your, your content landscape. What, I mean, we're all familiar with Lyft. Um, I've used Lyft a gajillion times. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to set up the user experience that, that I've come to love and I'm sure a lot of people who are here have also come to appreciate. Yeah, so there's there's quite a bit of content, you know, that that you would expect that uh, that we localize things like the app, things like backend server content, web content, help content. But there's actually quite a bit of of other content that we do translate as well. Um, for example, our engineering blog is something that we've recently um, localized into Spanish and have had some some internal uh, translators and view, uh, reviewers work on that as well. Um, messaging, uh, emails, push notifications, um, uh, SMS, uh, corporate communications, all of those have been, as, as we've grown our localization program, we've incorporated those into the, the translation workflow. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll see here, there's, there's quite a bit, um, and many of these actually do use uh, Contentful. Um, even things that you might see in the app itself, where it looks like it might belong to either a client or server string is actually housed in Contentful. And because of the ability to be a, a headless CMS where you can store your content um, in there uh, and it's very easy to, to connect it to whatever you like. And so more and more teams are starting to take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing that across so many of our customers. Adriana, what about you? Are you seeing a, a lot of customers that are leveraging Contentful for many different types of content? Yes, and I will talk further into that in a bit because that's one of the most uh, compelling arguments for using Contentful is um, you're able to ship it anywhere to any app or a website or an Alexa app or I mean anything that you can uh, can think of and you're also able to reuse that content. So if there are teams like Lyft that have some help content for drivers, but it's also relevant for the writer they can reuse that content and they don't have to keep uh, creating the same content over and over again. Yeah. I mean, it makes total sense because in this example, as you just shared, the rider experience and the driver experience, there are going to be a lot of similar phrases like passenger pickup or something like that. And Zach, I'm sure you're going to show some specific examples, but just as a consumer, from the consumer point of view, it makes a lot of sense that there would be content that's recycled often and across different content types. So I think it makes a lot of sense to leverage a headless CMS. In fact, at Smartling, we also leverage Contentful to manage our plethora of content, and it's been an awesome experience. So, so Zach, going back to, to 2018, when you were expecting this massive spike in demand for content, what was the real problem? that you were facing as a program manager and what was your company thinking about in terms of how to, how to solve this? Yeah, so uh, back when we first started, uh, when it was just me, Brian, and um, one uh, Spanish linguist who was reviewing our, our Spanish content, we really saw that we were not able to handle the amount of content um, that, was, that was coming in or that we were planning on coming in without either hiring more people or creating some kind of um, ecosystem and workflow where we were able to automate a lot of these, these jobs. 
Um, so we, we looked around, we, we were fortunate to have engineering resources to build a, a pipeline of sorts to handle um, a lot of the, the app and server content, but particularly for web content, which is, which is quite a bit, um, we needed to make sure that we leveraged uh, a, a connector here. So, so being able to, to set that up, and, and Brian was, was, was really integral in this, in, in making sure that we had automation for, for all of our all, all of our content, no matter if it was web, app, clients, help center, you know, things like that. So of course there's always gonna be some, some manual work here, but we were able to get it down to a level where we felt comfortable with the team that we had. That's awesome. And you of course went out and procured the, the software services of Contentful. Right, yeah, so um, it, was, it was actually, um, when we first started to localize, um, the the lift.com content was already in in contentful so we were able to already leverage that that partnership but what we saw was more and more teams started shifting to it and so as localization became more um uh prevalent at lift across more surfaces we we started to evangelize contentful and started saying hey this this integration works really well we we now offer our content in other languages if you were to use contentful to house your content, it's going to be extremely easy for you to have that in two languages, three languages, 10 languages. It's not going to matter how, how many languages we need. If you get it set up right uh, at the beginning, all we need to do is flip a few switches and then all of a sudden we're seeing content come in and in however many languages we need. So that was really, um, it was a little bit of a challenge uh, to get people to to switch over, um, as is anything. Uh, but once people did, I think they saw the advantages of, of what Contentful could offer um, and how easily it was able to connect with our system. Um, and, and the automation of it as well is, is like, what I love is, is seeing that whenever someone is, uh, they create a new entry, they, they draft, a, uh, they, they create a draft, um, we pull it in for, uh, for translation, it gets translated, but let's say they need to make a change on something in a few different places. I don't need to do anything for that. The connector takes care of everything. Um, so that's the kind of thing that really saves us time and allows us to work as a really uh, lean team. Hmm. That's really cool. Fact, this is why I love working with Lyft. <laughs> um, the fact that you just said like you internally evangelized just like on the localization aspect of it. Um, it's so cool to hear things like that because um, Contentful really can, you know, expand internally without even like me as the customer success manager being like, hey, do you have other projects? It's like, people are like, hey, we have more, we want to do more, we're just going to make this like, our like, main CMS now. So it's, it's been really awesome seeing more teams start to use Contentful and then hearing things like your internal evangelism or um, like the warm and fuzzies for, for us at Contentful. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it makes my life way easier. So I, I feel like it really is a win-win for, for both Contentful and, and for me and for the team that's using it um, because of the flexibility that's, that's in the content. I mean, one thing that I think is really cool, you can do character limits. And so when it comes to translation, character limits are extremely important. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know that every single team is using those character limits, but I know that at least a, a few of them are, and particularly with the design of a website, we want to make sure that we don't have a translation that's double, sometimes triple, you know, depending on the language, it could be Spanish or, or Russian, something like that, where translations are just inherently longer. Um, those character limits in Contentful can be carried over to Smartling very easily. And so that's, that's really one just small but important piece of the integration that I've noticed is really helpful. Zach, as you were evangelizing Contentful, you mentioned that there were some hurdles that you had to overcome in, in driving adoption from other teams. What were some of the things that people were saying and what are they saying now when they look back at their, their original thought process? Well, I feel like, you know, human psychology, I feel like change is difficult. No one really likes change. Um, and there are some, some integrations in our, in our systems that, that do allow um, people to, to use our, our existing translation pipeline, um, which is excellent for a lot of different use cases. Um, but since they moved to Contentful, there's a lot less uh, engineering work and engineering maintenance that needs to happen. Um, I think there's a lot less uh, of a chance for things to break um, or um, 
when we're uh, when they're setting up their content to flow from the CMS to our, our system, um, rather than use the the existing translation pipeline, if they can um, use an out of the box connector like like Contentful and, and Smartling have, then it just it takes a lot of the work out of it. So while it it takes a little bit of um, set up work in the beginning to move from a legacy system over to this connector. Once it's up and running, there's way less maintenance that, that needs to be done. Um, so that's really the main piece of feedback that I've heard is it's a little bit of a lift um, to move over, but then once once we're over, then the integration, uh, it just works a lot, a lot more smoothly. Yeah, and hearing that, I'm, I'm not super surprised because Contentful is not a WYSIWYG, so it's not page centric. Like you can literally create the experience that you want your editorial teams to have. Uh, so sometimes just out of the box, it might be a little confusing or it's, it's definitely something that you have to learn and, and get used to. So um, I'm here to support, you know, teams getting on board with this new, um, I guess, skill set that they're going to be able to leverage in the future. But um, thanks for sharing that, Zach. Well, Adriana, we've got a great question from the group uh, from Sumith about how how do we manage how do you manage content for multiple channel uh, channel taxonomy with Contentful? So maybe it would be a good time for you to walk us through yeah. what Contentful is and how does it work? Sure. So we like to think uh, of ourselves as part of a stack. So. We are just a platform that is uh, managing your content, but you may have something in there like translations. So um, on the left-hand side of your screen here, you see the Contentful Web Editor and then the translations aspect. So that could be Smartling here, for example. Product catalog, maybe that's something like a Shopify extension or something in there. Um, that's all created in the web app or using the CMA, so the Content Management API. And that's uh, shifted into your content platform uh, where we um, highly suggest that you, you know, unify and structure your content um, with uh, what we call um, topics and assemblies. So um, you want to think of your um, content as a clear and reusable, um, validatable topic um, that you're uh, using inside of nested assemblies uh, to compose topics to display across these different channels. Uh, once you're ready to hit publish and deliver that content using the delivery API, um, you can ship it to any channel. Um, so maybe that is a mobile app or, you know, a website, in-store experience, um, really whatever uh, experience you want to, to ship to, it's possible with Contentful. Um, and then we also have a couple other APIs, the GraphQL API, um, which provides a GraphQL interface to the Contentful, uh, or to content from Contentful. Um, we have the preview API, so that gives you um, a preview of your draft content. And then the uh, image API, which uh, enables you to make ad hoc changes um, to images by request. Um, so what we see here our uh, developers and the content creators, editorial teams working independently of each other, which enables them to move fast, um, to work how they want, um, can also give your editorial teams a more customized experience. As I mentioned, if you wanna build out some integrations or extensions in the web app, um, you can also give them the flexibility to change some things around with those different topics that they have. Um, and then, like Zach said, uh, and we were talking about earlier, we want you to be able to reuse that content. So if it's something that you can use for the writers and the drivers, it should be a topic that you can easily change and make updates to. And so we like have a saying that's like um, update once and like ship everywhere. Um, so if you had something that you needed to like maybe uh, change the case of, um, uh, of a word or something. Maybe it was in all caps and you want to actually change it to like sentence uh, format. You can easily just update that in one place and then hit deliver and uh, or publish and then it goes to any any um, place that that uh, content is live. So it's a pretty <laughs> pretty cool system when you come to think of it. 
Yeah, I, we, we get a lot of value out of that functionality. Just an example that we have is we do a lot of events like this and we will get pictures of our presenters. Like we had one of Zach for this particular uh, event. If Zach said to us, you know, I want to swap out my picture for this new one that I got, and we have Zach's photo on 10 pages of our website, we make the change one time, and all of a sudden, each of these 10 pages are updated instantaneously, which is just a great, it's a great advantage for us because we don't have to go page by page. We don't have to think about right. where Zach's pictures, you know, on our website. It just is a single update. But, yeah. you know, for you, Zach, I mean, this must be a total game changer because your content ecosystem is significantly larger than SmartLinks will, will ever be. So after hearing Adriana sort of like walk through what Contentful is for its customers, how does it resonate with you? What are the things that you hear that, that seem to be the biggest fit for Lyft? Yeah, you know, I, I don't work too much on the, on the content creation side, but I do work with, very closely with people that, that are on that side. And the, the ease and speed at which people are able to generate content and then push that content out um, is, is definitely the main piece of feedback I hear. Um, so if, if something does need to be changed, um, then uh, being able to propagate those changes across the, the entire platform is, is something that's very, very um, helpful for, for uh, the, the web front end team at Lyft. Um, and, there is a lot of content that gets reused across a lot of different pages. You know, writer content might get uh, reused um, across. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Ah, so uh, Lyft obviously operates at hundreds of airports around the U.S. Those airport pages are very, very similar. Um, of course, each one um, is, is is going to be a little bit different based on the the specific rules and and and. Um, regulations around an airport, but the general operating at an airport content is going to be the same, but all of those are going to be different pages and different entries, you know, one for LAX, one for SFO, one for JFK, things like that. Um, so if we need to make a change to the general rules of, a, of an airport about how Lyft operates, it's very easy for someone to go in and be able to make those changes um, once and then all of the airport pages get updated. There's other examples like that, but I think that's actually a really good one um, to, to share. Awesome. So Adriana, uh, one of the APIs that you all offer is uh, it, it enables other marketplace um, partners to integrate with Contentful. Uh, tell us a little bit about the simplicity of integrating SmartLing via your marketplace app. Yeah, so as I mentioned, we like to think of ourselves as a piece of your stack. So we wanna be able to easily integrate with other applications that you use. SmartLing is a great example. Uh, so we actually have a marketplace and this, uh, this GIF that I've created shows you how to get there. If you are using Contentful, you can just uh, click on the apps icon and then um, it will open an option to explore more apps. And then from there, you can see all of the different uh, extensions and integrations that you can install and start using um, pretty much immediately once you um, authenticate. So um, if you wanted to check this out and you have Contentful, it's really easy to just enable that in there. Awesome. So Zach, before we move on to SmartLang, we have a couple of questions that have come in. First, um, what Lyft channels are powered by Contentful? Um, so there's there's definitely a handful and it's it's growing um, every day um, or every week is, is probably a little bit more accurate. So our, our Lyft.com, our web content, um, our writer blog, the Lyft blog, um, the driver blog, which is also known as the hub. Um, there is our Lyft Learning Center for drivers that has um, uh, content that that uh, instructs drivers on on different ways on how they can maximize their earnings what's the best way to to really get the most out of out of lift um, and then I think I think that's about it though but I, I have to say across those platforms there's thousands of words that come in on a, on a daily basis um, so uh, what, what we're starting to see more is, is different teams, rather than store their content on our, on our server, is they're, 
they're starting to move to Contentful because of the flexibility that they have with the headless CMS. So yeah, I, I'd say those are the um, those are the main services that are using Contentful right now. Okay, great. And uh, I think I'll direct one of these to you, Adriana. The question is, and maybe this is maybe a, a broad answer that you can offer, maybe not exactly how Lyft or Zach does it, but when you deliver content to specific channels, so I guess the question is like when you create a change uh, to some content, do you ship it straight to production or to a test environment first? What do you recommend? Yeah, I was actually just typing out a response, but I'm happy to answer it um, IRL. So there are a couple options. We have that preview API that I mentioned, so you can see your draft uh, content in a very similar um, form as to what you would see um, when you actually hit publish. Or we do have um, environments that you can do testing in, so we might see a, Q and a QA um, environment or a dev environment that someone tests some things out in. And then we have the master environment, which um, all of your content that's live actually sits in. So there are a couple different options. Awesome. Now we'll get to a couple more of the questions that are in the chat and in the Q&A um, as we go. But uh, Zach, why don't you tell us a little bit about why uh, Smartling entered the picture. You were going through this process of scaling your content, but also your language translation needs. So tell us a little bit about how Smartling came to be part of the Lyft stack. Yeah, so we um, tried out uh, the the whole localization process for Lyft was a, a, a pretty uh, hefty uh, lift, uh, if you if you uh, pardon the pun. Uh, the, the way the platform was built, it wasn't really set up to handle more than one language, which allowed us to scale very fast. But when we needed to peel back all the layers to allow more than one language, um, it was it was quite a lot of work. So we we tried out um, a couple of other vendors, um, and, and again, Brian was was um, integral in, in helping us build the relationship with with Smartling. So we looked at all the um, all the features that uh, that Smartling could offer, and it really gave us the 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 best mix between um, usability um, along with uh, features and integration. Um, so um, as I said before, there's a, a proprietary Lyft translation pipeline that um, seamlessly integrates with Smartlink. So what we're able to do is have, have that um, more nuanced, um, uh, unique pipeline connect with Smartlink as well as have all these out of the box connectors. So the, the mix between having the flexibility to do both of those things would really is, is what drove us to, to use Smartlink in the first place. Yeah, so Smartling, for those of you who don't know, is a language translation company. We have software and we have services, which I'll talk about in a moment, that help enable our customers like Zach to scale their content experiences into any languages. And we have an integration uh, that's that you can use out of the box with Contentful. It plugs into all of the different services that Contentful offers, which makes it super easy for you to actually just add languages or one click to translate content and Zach's actually going to walk us through how he does that within his contentful and smiling experience. But our translation, uh, our approach is to resolve the multifaceted challenges that localization and translation introduce with both software and services. So we have a translation man management system, which has API, API endpoints that our customers can reach through pre-built integrations or an open-ended API. That way all of your content can get into the TMS automatically. This is where you are going to manage all of your content. And we also offer language translators that support every language and different business verticals and things like that so that you can translate and effectively localize your content into any language. But we are getting a couple questions about, Zach, how you've set up the entire translation pipeline. So maybe you can, you can walk us through uh, how you leverage uh, your team, Contentful and Smartling, to automate the, the content management workflow. And maybe if you could also speak to QA, there were a couple of questions um, in the chat about QA. Yeah, so I, I, I will admit I am not an engineer, so I'm probably not the best person to talk about the specifics of how the, the pipeline works. Um, and probably a few things that uh, we want to keep you know close to the vest here but but I will say that uh, it was something that was that was built for 
for Lyft um, internally. Um, and, and as Adrian was just mentioning, the, the API endpoints, the open-ended way that, that SmartLink is able to receive that, it was, it was very easy for us to hook up and to also uh, scale that pipeline to hook up to different projects. So if it's a, if it's a, client, uh, a client project, um, uh, like the app or, or server content, or if there's other new services that start sending content through, we're able to leverage that, that same pipeline. Um, and then on the, on the QA front, um, as, as far as um, uh, QA, like, uh, like, like Eng QA, we do have a team at Lyft that where localization is, is a piece of that. So they will test other languages to make sure that strings are not broken, um, that the experience in that language is, is also working properly and there's nothing breaking because the strings are in a different language. As far as uh, linguistic QA, we do rely on our, our vendors. We have two different vendors, SmartLink being one of them for um, a lot of our content, particularly on the, on the backend server side. Um, so, so we do rely heavily on the, on the linguistic QA that SmartLink provides. But so far, based on the feedback we received, um, the, the quality is, is quite high. Um, so we're, we're very pleased with that. Um, was there any other part of that, uh, that question or, or was that about it? No, I think that that's a, a really helpful overview. And what you see here is the simplicity of how a company, in this case, how, how um, Lyft is able to integrate all of its different content types with a TMS and the ability to easily translate all of that content and have multiple people logging in and, and managing this. I think what's really unique about localization and translation and contentful is that many different teams can use the same product to get their content published to the marketplace. And um, it, it's, it's a huge effort <laughs> to do this. And I think what's so cool is that Zach and the team at Lyft have done an amazing job creating a fully automated workflow with these different solutions. So kudos to you and your team, Zach. And I think we should show what this looks like across a couple of initiatives that you've been working on with the team, the Lyft blog and Lyft Up. What, what are these two different content types and walk us through uh, what you were trying to achieve? Yeah, so, so the Lyft blog is writer facing content. Um, it gets updated very frequently, um, I would say, two to three times a week on average, there's a new post um, in, in there and all that content is housed in Contentful. And then Lift Up is our um, arm for community engagement, philanthropy, um, and all of that is housed on, on our web, lift.com, um, which is also in, in Contentful. So there are two very visible uh, pieces of the Lift experience that are both able to be um, localized uh, very easily because of their uh, where they're stored and contentful. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I've been seeing a lot of ads for, for Lift Up recently. It's a, it's a really cool program that you guys have launched and uh, it's super important now. So wh why don't we look through the Lift blog? This is the Lift blog. Yeah. Yeah, so there's quite a, uh, a wide range of, of content that you'll see on the Lyft blog. Um, and there's definitely some overlap between the two. Uh, you'll, you'll see some, uh, for example, one of the first responses there or the, the, one of the top posts there is, is uh, activating Lyft up for Hurricane Sally. So um, any type of uh, community support initiatives you'll see uh, branded with, with Lyft up. Um, one of my favorite ones is actually, uh, it's called Roundup and Donate. You probably won't see that here, but there's a way for if you take a Lyft ride, uh, let's say it's 11.50 for your trip, it'll round up to $12 and then donate that, that 50 cents to uh, a, uh, a charity that's, that's uh, listed in the app itself. And there's about a dozen charities and we're always adding more um, depending on the, the partnerships that we have in the time of year, things like that. Um, I personally am, am right now for Latinx Heritage Month, I'm donating to Raices, which is a, um, a nonprofit law firm um, that provides legal support for um, um, immigrants uh, that, are, that are struggling, that, that don't have uh, access to that. Um, so yeah, um, uh, the, the way that, that we're able to engage 
um, on on these on these uh, sites is is pretty incredible, um, and particularly on the blog, um, both on the on the rider and the and the driver's side, uh, we have a, a quite a large population, uh, particularly on the driver's side, that are are non English speakers. So being able to provide that type of content um, in their in their preferred language is is really key. Um, yet you'll see one of the top ones now is um, the ride to vote, helping more people get to the polls on election day. Extremely relevant right now, and um, that's a really interesting initiative. The one here on the screen is talking about resilient streets, so it's building streets that are more human centric as opposed to car centric. Um, you know, Adrian, I know you're in New York. I'm sure you see those city bikes everywhere um, every day. Uh, Right, uh, and so those the the resilient streets initiative is is something that's not just unique to New York, but it's um, it, it's something that that we want to try and get uh, everywhere and be able to make it easier for people to get around, um, whether it's walking, bikes, you know, things like that. Eventually, autonomous cars, but uh, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> we'll have another <laughs> webinar on autonomous vehicles another day. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. And um, this is uh, your lift up content. Yeah. So, so lift up is a, is a wide umbrella that we have where it's anywhere from, as I said, round up and donate. Um, there's a grocery access program, which allows people um, they're called, uh, I think it's food desert um, is, and that was actually a really interesting, just from a transcreation standpoint um, uh, on the linguistic side, how do you translate food desert to get the same type of, uh, meaning, which means it's it's an area that doesn't have good access to a grocery store with fresh produce and things like that. So uh, allowing people to use Lyft to get to these grocery stores at a, a subsidized discounted rate is something that's, that's part of Lift Up. You also see we have a jobs access program as well that um, transportation is a huge blocker sometimes for people to be able to get to a job interview and then make it to the job once they get the job. So um, Lyft again, offering um, subsidized rides to people to be able to facilitate them getting jobs. So it's, it's really a, you know, it's, it's, it's a wide program. We're always adding to it. Um, but those are two of the main ones that that Lyft engages in. So um, if you're, if you're curious about it, I'd, I'd highly encourage you to to check it out. Um, just a quick search on, on Lift Up and you'll be able to see all the different initiatives across all the different markets that, that Lyft participates in. Yeah, this is a really cool initiative. Um, I, I think you actually highlighted something that answers a question or, or a comment that Dave made in the chat a little bit earlier, which is the importance of uh, the differences between translation and localization. Um, and you just described that pretty well in the term food desert, because that could be translated, but in certain markets, food desert as it's translated form won't resonate with the market. Right. Yeah. And that's where we're, we really rely heavily on our, on our translation vendors to, to, to look at the content, to use visual context, to work closely with us, um, with, with me in particular, to be able to answer questions and clarify any type of um, terms that may may um, uh, may come up like this. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the page here. Um, it is it is food deserts. Um, but you know, if you if you literally translate that, that's going to sound very very strange, um, uh, most likely in, in most languages. So being able to understand what that means and then come up with a good term. Um, is is extremely important. So that's really not just simple translation. It's 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 trans creation or another term I heard is trans adaptation as well. So being mm -hmm. able to you know translate something but then adapt it for for that market. So Zach, why don't why don't we take people through the process of how simple it is to scale content with Contentful and Smartly? And Adriana, feel free to jump in at any time here. Absolutely. So, so what I really like about the the Contentful SmartLink connector is that it's it's two sided. Um, so I can I can request translation and see the status of translation both in Contentful and in SmartLink. So the screenshots you'll see up here right now are the the web app from the marketplace in Contentful. Um, so on an entry, I can um, connect my my Contentful and SmartLink account very easy. It's a click of a button happens in just a few seconds. And then I can see the progress by language for that entry in Contentful. Um, and then 
I can see uh, the if it's in progress. I can see if it's completed. Uh, I don't have a screenshot here, but there's another one if it's awaiting authorization. So if it hasn't, if the translation hasn't started yet, um, and so uh, if I want to, I can go ahead and um, if I haven't requested translation, I, I can request it here, which then takes me into SmartLink, or I can actually click on one of the languages itself to be able to see the the actual progress here. Um, and what's cool is, is that bar, it's not just an, an, an icon, it actually shows you the actual progress. So like I see that Spanish is a little bit less than half finished, um, French is a little bit more, um, and then on the screenshot on the far right, you'll see that um, Russian, Vietnamese, and simplified Chinese haven't, they're in progress, but they haven't really started yet. French is clearly almost done. Um, so so the, the transparency that the Contentful Connector offers is really great. So if you go to the next slide, we'll see the, the, the SmartLink side of it. So if I click Request Translation or any one of those languages, it'll take me directly into the SmartLink platform and be able to see um, the, the progress again. So, so I can see um, if I want to uh, request a translation, I'm able to either create a new job for that or I can actually add it to an existing job as well. I can pick which languages I want. I can add a description. Um, another thing that's really cool is if there's any related assets, and this is something that I, um, I, I leverage a lot, if there's multiple modules on an entry, I don't have to request all of those. I can just click uh, include related assets, and it'll pull all the assets in um, at once. And, and so that way I don't have to go in and say, request translation again, and then do it 10 times for 10 different assets. I can do it once, um, and if they're all related, then, uh, then it'll, it'll, it'll group them all in the, in the same job. Um, so it's just, it's flexible, it's transparent, um, it's something I use every day, um, and it just, it makes my life easier overall. That's awesome. And I, and I think it's really cool that even within Contentful, you, you really don't have to leave Contentful to understand where your translations are in the workflow. Right. So your, yeah. your developers who are like itching to know, like, when can we publish this? They can actually see without pinging you first, approximately what languages are done and which are in progress and how complete they are. Exactly. Yeah. And it's probably the editorial teams that are waiting for this um, to, to get, you know, completed so that they can finish um, and publish. Uh, but this uh, sidebar that Zach is referring to is, is uh, customizable. So if you wanted to change this in any way, you can do that. Um, we also have the option to um, schedule a publish. So if you wanted to schedule this to go out, let's say, um, on Black Friday or something. That's a big uh, scheduling day that we have. That's also something that you would see um, in the sidebar as well as a uh, workflow. So you can add tasks for approval. So if you have legal that needs to approve something right before it goes out, you can assign them that task and then, um, and then it's ready to be published too. So the sidebar is one of the most important, I would say pieces um, in the entire Contentful um, web app content uh, editorial process. Awesome. Thanks for adding that, Adrian. Yeah. So once you dive into the TMS, I think this is like a really cool uh, feature that we offer, Zach. You can actually produce automatic job creation so you can submit content on a regular basis. How, how do you think about the process of bundling content for translation and how often are you doing it? And yeah, take me through, like how, what's the process for you? Yeah, so one of the main advantages of the Contentful Connector is that once once a piece of content is authorized for translation, any changes that get made um, will automatically be picked up. So on this screen here, this is the jobs view in SmartLink, and there's quite a bit of information that, that you can see on here. So um, the, the daily bucket job for Contentful Connector, that's an automated. I did not create that. Um, that is something that if uh, if something gets changed, um, uh, if, the, if there's... Uh, some kind of edits that, that needed to be made to the post itself, then, then that'll get picked up and be um, pulled into, into SmartLink um, automatically. So, but uh, a couple of the other ones, like activating Lift Up for Hurricane Sally, that was uh, a piece of content. That's, that's a specific blog post. That's one that I was able to create manually. Um, so I, I think what's, what's really nice is being able to have the automation, but if I need to, to go in and authorize something to pull it in right away, I'm also able to do that. So it's, it's really having both sides. I try to avoid that as much as I can, but having that ability um, 
uh, to, to do it is, is, is key. Um, so as I said, there's quite a bit of information here. Uh, you can see on the left side, the, the red bar um, means that um, there's a, a possibility that that job may be slipping past the due date. So that flags for me to engage with the translation vendor to, to make sure that, uh, that we're gonna be on time. For that, um, the little flag where there's a, a zero next to it is if, uh, if there's any issues, any, any flags that a, a translator has, has brought up with a piece of content. So um, luckily for me, there's no issues on these, on these uh, pieces of content, on these jobs. But if, uh, if there were, it'd be very easy for me to, to click on that and go in and answer, answer the question. For example, um, let's say there was some kind of term that was not in the glossary. Uh, that that wasn't clear. They'd be able to the the linguist would be able to go in and and flag it for me, and I'd be able to go into it and answer. And then the progress bar, um, purple is is in translation, uh, orange is editing, um, and then green is published. So. I can see how much content still in the translation step, how much is in editing, how much has been published uh, overall. Um, and then, you know, I can see when it was created, when I have the due date uh, for it. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a, a page I, I look at on a, on, a, on a daily basis to be able to know what the status is of, of all the translation jobs I currently have in progress. We're getting some amazing questions and we're gonna try and answer as many of them as we can. And if we don't answer them on this call, we'll publish a web page that answers everyone's questions. Uh, one of the questions, and I'll quickly answer this, is how does the progress bar work that must be manually updated by the translator? Actually, no. Um, in the next slide, we're gonna show you what the translator experience looks like. And because it's built into our cloud platform, every time they save a string, everything here gets automatically updated. So it's, it's super, easy to get content to the translator. They translate it in the cloud as soon as they click submit, that's registered and the results go back to Smartling and to Contentful so that the customer can, can look at the progress. Um, once the translation goes from in progress to complete, how do you publish out each piece of content within Contentful? Uh, is that for me or is that for, for Adriana? Um, I think either of you could probably answer it, but uh, Zach, maybe you should take a crack. Sure. Um, yeah. So um, once the content is completed in Smartling and it moves to a to a published state, it comes back into Contentful almost immediately. Um, I, I've definitely had uh, I've seen some some translations that uh, that have been finished. Uh, I've even actually had to do some translations. Uh, my formal training is in in Spanish language, so in in a pinch. Uh, I've had to step in and do a, a translation or two. Um, and when I publish it, um, I'm able to see it come back to, to, to Contentful almost immediately. So um, there is um, some automated ways to, to publish content um, in, in, in Contentful. Again, I'm not the, the, the biggest content creator in there, so I'm not doing a lot of publishing on my end. Um, but there are ways to, to to automate that, to either have it published at a certain time or to even set up a, a cron job to run at a specific time of day and anything that has come in um, uh, will, will be published at that time. Yeah, I think it really depends on uh, team's workflow. Like if things need to be approved by legal, like I said before, they're able to be published or if you just want to have uh, one last, you know, look at something before um, you actually are ready to go. Um, it really depends on on the team, I would say. Yeah, but it's I mean, it's it's safe to say it can be as automated as the customer would like for it to be or as many checkpoints. I thought that was really cool earlier, Adriana, you were talking about your your side rail and how you can have a workflow. Um, mm -hmm. Functionality there where you have maybe a legal person review it or maybe an executive has to review that particular mm -hmm. piece of content. So that's a, a really compelling way to seamlessly manage the content from end to end. Right. And we're actually working on a, an improved version of workflows right now too. So <laughs> stay tuned if you are a Contentful user uh, for an actual workflows feature. Awesome. Uh, okay, Zach, so why don't you walk us through like this translator experience now, because the content has been automatically uh, traveled to the translator. We've covered all of that. This is the experience that the translator gets. 
Yeah, so this is the cat tool and not cat like meow. This is a computer assisted translation tool um, that uh, the linguist will see within Smartling. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's really a powerful tool. And as I just mentioned, sometimes I'll be doing uh, Spanish translations in a pinch. So I, I, do, I do work with this, this piece of Smartling um, pretty frequently. Um, and so it, it just, it gives the, the flexibility for the linguist to be able to see um, uh, different strings that have been saved in our translation memory. Uh, if there are any uh, issues that have been raised by another by another linguist um, that have been answered about this particular string. If there are glossary terms that are part of the string, they, they have access to that as well. Um, there's even a way to uh, use a machine translation. Uh, I know a lot of times, uh, of course, you know, using machine translation, it's important to, to review those strings, but having it as a base to be able to facilitate uh, translation to make it go a little bit faster is definitely something that I've used in the past. And then of course, being able to see uh, visually what the string is they're, they're translating. So this one is uh, about our um, Express Drive program, uh, which is a way for drivers to, to rent a vehicle to be able to drive and earn money on the Lyft platform. Um, but I think it's also really important to be able to see the person next to the car, particularly with the term wear and tear. Um, we're Lyft is very big on, on transcreation. Wear and tear is, you know, it, it, it's an idiom. Uh, for sure in, in English. So being able to see that that's related specifically to, to, to vehicle, um, vehicle maintenance um, is, is, is really important to be able to get the translation right in uh, no matter what language we're, we're localizing into. Yeah, and uh, you know, a few people have asked questions about how do you manage quality? How do you get high quality translations at Lyft? What does the QA process looks like? This is where it starts. It's like when you have this visual context interface, which is uh, native with the Contentful integration, super easy for SmartLink to ingest the, the portal, the view portal that the end user will see. And as you actually type the translation, it appears as the translator is working on it. So they can see if it's gonna break the, the character limits or the UX or anything like that. Um, how, I guess, Zach, one of, your, one of my questions for you, and it's coming from the audience is, how do you think about quality assurance for translation? And do they, do you, does your QA team use this interface as well? Um, the QA team does, does not work a lot in SmartLing. They have their own platform to, to do QA in um, with test phones uh, of different sizes, of different brands. So they're always testing either on you know, an iPhone, Android, uh, a smaller iPhone. Uh, I hear quite frequently that the iPhone SE, that's the really small one, is the, the bane of their existence because a lot of times, uh, particularly with, with translation, it's, uh, if strings are longer on that SE, they'll just get truncated uh, pretty, pretty easily. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, that's something that, that they're testing on, on their end. With regards to quality, the way I like to think about it is let's start at the beginning rather than have the mistakes um, or uh, mistranslations happen and correct them later. Let's build a really great translation memory. Let's build a great glossary. Let's have those tools in the beginning to minimize those errors down the line. Is it perfect? No, of course not. There's always going to be things that, that we need to edit but there's a lot fewer errors when we focus more on giving the, the linguist the tools to be able to um, have all the context, have all the, the glossary um, available to them, as well as the translation memory to get the translation right the first time. Um, so because we rely, we don't have any in internal um, linguists working um, at the moment, we rely on, on vendors. We really wanna make sure that, that they're set up for success. Um, so that's really the way we view it right now. That's great. So, um, Zach, we, we shared this slide at the beginning, but when you implemented Contentful, when you implemented Smartling, these are some of the, the capabilities you were able to realize. 75% of your workflow was eliminated, the manual effort to, to get this done, and you were able to deploy content a lot faster. But why don't you walk us through some of the performance of the actual content? Because this is the really exciting part. You put in all the hard work to get to this. 
Right. So these are some numbers. And um, actually, this was a fairly recent report that we were able to pull um, that someone on the web team was able to pull for me. And I was um, pleasantly surprised by, by these numbers. Um, so this is looking at the Lyft blog. So that's the, the, the writer facing content uh, for non-English users, Q1 versus Q2. So the while the web content, Lyft.com, um, was housed in a, in a space in Contentful and has been localized for quite a while, the blog was not. And so when the blog was migrated over, it was very, um, that last slide where the, a lot of the workflow was eliminated, that was from uh, the blog being housed in an environment where, where it wasn't very easy to localize. It was very, very manual. So when we switched over to Contentful, all of a sudden, all of those processes became automated and the vast majority of uh, the 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 workflow um, was was facilitated and it was made a lot easier to be able to to switch on other languages. Um, so so we see here a fifty percent increase in unique page views, sixty one percent increase in sessions, forty one percent increase in user traffic, and um, my favorite actually is twenty nine percent increase on time on the page um, for for non English users. So not only are there more people coming. They're looking at more pages, but they're also spending more time on each page. And what that really tells me is that in the past, if, if they saw English content, they were either glossing over it or not necessarily digesting it in the way um, that we want them to. So seeing that increase in their, they're spending more time on the page means they understand the, con uh, to me at least, they, they understand the content and are more engaged with it. So all of these metrics really lead to, um, a, a very positive outcome from from what we did, um, and it's it's really encouraging. Um, and this, to me, is definitely something that I'm going to use for for other teams to be able to say, "Hey, look at the success we had on the Lyft blog, and let's let's go ahead and duplicate that um, for for your content as well." That's awesome. This is a tremendous result. Congrats to to you and the team. Thank you. So there are a couple, couple of other questions here. Maybe there'll be some rapid fire ones before we wrap up. Um, first and foremost, are there any UI strings that are being managed in Contentful at Lyft? Uh, UI meaning app? Yeah. App -based I, strings or? I, I would think app and specifically like buttons or navigation items. Sure. Yeah. So um, on on web content, on the blog, um, on the uh, the Lyft Learning platform, which is the driver information um, driver uh, training material, um, which is housed in the app. There's there's definitely some buttons in there um, uh, on on the web uh, the web content. There are there are buttons um, that are that are part of that as well. Um, so yes, the, those, those elements are being, uh, sent through Contentful. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see, this is, this is a good one. Um, there are a lot of good ones here. Um, okay. Uh, another question for you, Zach, what value do you see in migrating your mobile app to Contentful? What is the business case in this environment? So just to be clear, it's not our entire mobile app um, that is that is in Contentful, but there are pieces of it. Um, uh, one one being the the Lyft Learning Center for for drivers. Um, there's actually some help content as well um, that's that's being housed in Contentful. Um, I, I think just the the, the flexibility um, and ease of of sending content back and forth and and knowing that it's it's going to uh, to make it there, particularly in an automated way. Um, not to say our, our translation pipeline doesn't work, which, which of course it does, but there's just a lot less maintenance, I think, um, when you rely on a, on a connector here. And you have a lot more support, um, whereas if you use our, our internal uh, pipeline, that's, that's really all on Lyft uh, for us to maintain. But if you, we use a Contentful connector, we can also rely on Contentful to be able to maintain that. So it's really more of a, more of a team effort. So, so I'd say that's, that's really the value is just having more more support um, when you when you migrate over to a to a platform like Contentful. Awesome. We have so many more questions, but we don't have enough time. So we're gonna we're gonna answer the questions later. Adriana, maybe sure. do you have any closing questions or thoughts? Uh, no, I mean it's really like I said, exciting to hear um, from customers that are using Contentful in the way that we want them to and to see even just like these numbers. It's super exciting and 
it's it's compelling for us to take this to other teams that are debating on you know translating or localizing content and saying now is the time it's, it's not that complicated so get a smart person like Zach to own the project and and uh, start running with it so I really appreciate you sharing all this knowledge with uh, with everyone here today Zach absolutely my pleasure and and definitely the uh it's all on my end. I, I feel like, you know, that's, it, it really is. It's, it's truly a, a win-win. My life is easier every day because of uh, Contentful, particularly being a, a small lean team um, of, of localization at Lyft. So yeah, I just, I, I appreciate all the, all the hard work that, that goes into it and all the hard work that, that uh, both Smartling and Contentful have done to really build a, a great out of the box connector that, that, that works for us across multiple, multiple channels and multiple platforms. Yes, we thank you as well, Zach. This is an awesome, um, awesome opportunity for us to learn from you. And it's clear because we've got so many questions that people want to learn more. Um, so thanks for, for giving everybody a peek into your day to day. Thanks for sharing your story. And thanks to everybody who's logged on to check this out. I hope everyone has a great day. Adriana, it was great to, to have you on the call. Zach, thanks thank so you. much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. See ya. Bye.